Welcome to Classical Chats, a series where I talk to people who love classical music, anyone from professional musicians to casual everyday listeners, or even you. This is episode two, and yes, filmed on the same day as episode one. My name is Tiffany, I'm a classical pianist, and I'm also the founder of Together With Classical, which is a nonprofit charity dedicated to your passion for classical music and to bringing everyone together in the shared passion for classical music. For the first few episodes, I am very honored to be partnering up with Dreamstage, which some of you actually saw me perform a live stream concert just a few days ago. It's a very, very revolutionary platform for high quality live streaming concerts. And I am very excited that I will be partnering with Dreamstage through my charity together with Classical, where I get a chance to meet with these artists, talk about their experiences with music, and also offer a sponsored ticket giveaway. Actually, it's 20 concert tickets giveaway. This time, I have the honor of speaking with a very acclaimed German pianist, Martin Stratfeld, and he is very well known for his Bach recordings and playing, and I am very much looking forward to learning from him and from his experience. Thank you so much for joining me on Classical Chat. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you. I remember your performance with Jan Vogler and Gil Shaham in Dresden uh, back in March, I think, last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah so right. well, well, it's great to true. get to talk nice. to you. <laughs> yeah, nice to, nice to see you again. So um, I wanted to just kind of get to know your musical process, maybe, and your affinity to Bach, because I have... Um, heard you play Bach a lot and I heard you also play on the Dresden Music Festivale 24 hour live stream and uh, you're definitely a master at Bach. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit how your journey with Bach started. How did you pick or why did you choose Bach? Well, when I was a boy, about six, seven years old, I had a wonderful first piano teacher. And he was an organ player and a, a choir conductor. So um, not uh, specifically a pianist, but more a, a musician and a wonderful teacher. And so he introduced me to Bach, to preludes and fugues. And we, for example, used to make um, words on the fugue themes, like mm -hmm. The C sharp major fugue, lam da 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 bam bam bi da da da. So we made a, a German text like, jetzt kann ich endlich in Cis Dur komponieren, which means like, uh, finally I can compose in C sharp major because oh. of the well tempered piano invention thing. Yeah. Right. So for me, it felt very familiar and, 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 and very communicative and very emotional, the music of Bach uh, from the very first moment I played it. And also I was. Uh, totally uh, fascinated by the harmonies Bach uses, especially, for example, in the C uh, major prelude, the uh, World Temporary Piano starts with, yeah, and he showed me, and he told me, just listen to it. And then he played the piece, but he didn't play it by broken chords, he played the real chords and made me listen to this magical harmonies. So, so. this was the very first, first beginning of my love with Bach, and so I felt uh, very close to Bach uh, from the first moment uh, I played Bach on the piano. And I never could really understand when people told me later on at university and so on, oh, Bach, I adore him, but I feel his music is very complicated. And uh, I'm still waiting to play it because I never felt his music as complicated. Oh. I felt it as, yes, but in a way that many people talk with each other and right. everybody wants to say something very interesting. Yeah, and uh, they are talking on the same topic, of course. The topic is the theme that is introduced at the very beginning of a fugue. Right. But then everybody has a certain point of view about this topic. And this is what a fugue is for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think a lot of people are scared about Bach fugues because they are so complicated technically. So it's, um, do you have any tips maybe? Because I, I asked my audience about this and a lot of them were like um, asking for tips on how to just not be afraid of fugues because they're beautiful pieces of music, but it's a bit of a hurdle for especially people starting out at piano. Yeah, the first uh, tip maybe is don't be afraid and yeah, uh, exactly. just, feel in, just feel in love with it, yeah, when you start uh, to play it. And um, try to make 
every note to go through your soul when you play it yeah like when you start the theme already maybe of a of a slow fugue and uh, really feel every every single note very deeply and uh, get into this mood because every fugue of Bach has a, a certain mood you have to it's like a door you open and you come into a very special room and uh, of a very special atmosphere and a very special emotional mood and you have to really get into that and uh, get a try to be a part of that and then feel every note go through your mind and through your soul and this is maybe the most important thing when you play Bach also to remember Bach because many people say oh it's so hard to remember the fugues I can't uh, I can't play without the music and to remember Bach is very important to have felt emotionally every single note and just to, to listen by the heart while while you play it and then uh, it's it's because it's uh, emotionally connected then you can remember it very very easily. Yeah. Do you, do you still make up words with the fugues or was that just a children uh, way of getting introduced to the fugues? <laughs> that's a very, a very nice question, actually, because sometimes, uh, well, it was a, a thing of childhood, of course, and was a good way to open the door uh, my, my teacher uh, did for me. But sometimes when I play a fugue, sometimes, um, uh, words come to my mind. Yeah, for oh, example, really? for wonderful F sharp major fugue I, uh, from the uh, first part, da di da di da 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 feels like a lullaby for me. Mein liebes Kind, nun schlafe ein, ich werde bei dir sein. So my my beloved kid, just just uh, uh, fall asleep. I will I will stay with you. Yeah, and this is because this is what I feel. For example, about this piece is so touching yeah when i when i, when I played this because it feels as a, such an intimate uh, situation of the the biggest love you can imagine for anybody yeah wow that's very interesting i i i don't play a lot of fugues and i definitely don't have the same experience but i will definitely think of that trying to connect emotionally and maybe some words will appear to me because I, I always usually just kind of remember the music by itself without so much um anything else but that's a wonderful way to think about it. Thank you. <laughs> I see that on Dream Stage you are playing the book one of the Well Tempered Clavier, but I also saw on your social media that you haven't played it in a while. So, what made you choose to play them now? Well, I think uh, the start of Dream Stage is, is a quite an important thing for all of us, and it's a um, it's uh, it feels like uh, feels like important. It feels like an important uh, moment, yeah. And uh, I'm quite uh, happy to be part of that moment, yeah. That's just happening. So I thought long time about it. What what will I play at this special moment? And then I thought, yeah, well tempered clavier because this is maybe beside Goldberg variations, of course, yeah. The the title that is uh, closest connected with my life, yeah, from childhood on and uh, of course uh, many years ago i played it very often at for me very important uh, recitals yeah so it uh, also is connected with my career but it was always connected very much with my with my soul so i remember when i was in my youth i used to play the whole thing at night yeah when it was dark outside everybody was was asleep and my parents they were asleep or Try to <laughs> because I was playing the world tempered clavier oh, wow. all, night, all night over. So this uh, <laughs> made it really uh, to, to be a very special piece for me. So I remembered uh, when when Jan asked me what what do you want to play uh, for Dream Stage, and so I said okay, I play I play the uh, world tempered clavier because this is maybe the most important uh, cycle I do play in my whole life. Oh wow, that's really touching. Is it because of your um, first introduction to Bach as the childhood, is that the link to it? Or is there something more in the music itself that's made you come back to it now even? Well, it felt like uh, it, it was there always when I needed it. Yeah? Oh. And this may be also my relationship with Bach because of course uh, there are composers sometimes you say, ah, oh, now I'm more interested in Brahms or now I'm more focused on Beethoven or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bach he always felt, uh, for me, feels like he's always waiting for me. Yeah, ah. and whenever <laughs> I need him, he's there. Ah, that's such a nice feeling. 
and this is uh, uh, the, the way he, he very modestly, he carries me through my life, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm always uh, uh, connected with him. And uh, there were always situations in my life I, I needed him more uh, and uh, situations I needed him less. But he was always there when, when, when I needed him. And uh, um, so he's, he's connected with, with me and my, my life. Oh, that's really I'm connected with him, hopefully. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sure. Wow. That's, that's nice to hear such a personal connection with Bach. And yeah. Um, speaking of things that we really um, need in our <laughs> lives and uh, always there for us is just classical music in general. And I read um, from your biography and your interviews that you did some albums where you try to bring classical music more accessible or easy to listen to for children. Can you actually talk a little bit about that? Yes, I made a, uh, recently I made a CD, a Beethoven for kids. Uh, unfortunately, it's only in German because it's, it's very, very difficult to translate. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. But we've got a German audience here also. So how did that uh, project get started? And yeah, can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, well, um, in a way, it started many years ago when I uh, uh, was asked by the Concerthaus Dortmund when I was maybe 20, 23 years old and uh, I was invited to play recital there in a, in a new series that was called Junge Wilde, so Young World uh, Interpreters. Yeah, And uh, this was always connected with uh, uh, that you had to go to school and tell the kids about what you played. Yeah, mm -hmm. and This was the first time I did this and I went to, went to school. It was a a school of uh, kids that were n n never uh, in touch with classical music before at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, it was a very uh, interesting experience, but it was a lovely experience. And from that moment, I started to do this school thing. I, I go to schools, and especially to schools, I love to go to schools even more when the kids uh, uh, didn't have a connection yet with classical music. Uh, okay. Of course, you can go to the gymnasium and. Uh, they are very well prepared with what you play. I, I do this also, but I don't like this as much as to go to a school where, you know, the music I will play for these kids now, they never heard in their life before. Yeah. And, uh, this is a very interesting experience because you also prove what you do. You, you prove the music we do because for us, it's like, it's normal we play this music. Yeah, it's normal. We have the audience to play this music and they are all very educated and know about this and so on. Uh, but sometimes we have to, to, to make the proof if this music is really as uh, touching and as uh, connective as we think. And right. it is, yeah. And so I started this, this cool thing for, um, for many years. I did this and, and uh, I also made a CD, Bach for Kids, uh, many years ago. And uh, I started to think about, uh, ah, isn't it possible to also introduce Beethoven in a, in, a, in a more or less serious way to the kids? Because when I go to school, I'm not um, a clown, you know? I, 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 I don't do any childish things for the kids. I'm very serious with them because I made the experience that the kids want to hear the real stories about life. So they want to hear the happy stories, but they also want to hear the sad stories. For example, I always used to tell them a story that Bach uh, made a trip with um, with his chef uh, and he came back and he found his wife not only dead but uh, the, the, the funeral was over already so he, t he couldn't even uh, say goodbye to her and he was he was there alone with his five kids yeah so life had to go on in this grief and this is a absolutely horrible uh, situation in life so he 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 helped himself out of that with music he wrote yeah it's very sad music but that can can give uh, support to us when we when we sometimes feel the same and I tell the kids each everybody of you sometimes feels like isolated and you can't talk to anybody yeah and and you feel like nobody would understand me anymore and then this music that Bach wrote in that moment and I play this for them then of course this can help us and can can give us uh, uh, trost and and support yeah. Hmm. That's really wonderful. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I always try to find a balance between how to present music that's also able to connect with uh, audiences or people who just have never heard of classical music, but also still maintain that seriousness and the integrity of classical music. So that's great. Do you have anything else that you would like 
me to ask you about for the audience who some of them actually might not be experienced in classical music, some might be. In, in, especially in our days, it's, it, it's our job to invite people, yeah? the, to invite everybody and, uh, and uh, to show people that there's classical music in a way is, is a product, yeah? that goes, can go very deeply, yeah? uh, that's very, very healthy also for, for mind and for spirit and for, for emotional life. Yeah? And especially in our days, uh, things happen so quickly and, and, uh, and sometimes we feel a little uh, yeah, isolated in, in, in our lives. And classical music, uh, the real music like Bach, Beethoven, Mozart and Schumann and, and Schubert, really can bring us back to ourselves, yeah, and in ourselves. And I think this is, uh, is a very wonderful experience everybody should, should have. Especially in these times, I mean, how are you doing actually with all of this um, crazy corona times? Well, uh, thank you. I'm actually fine. Um, I compose a little oh, bit. Oh, you compose? Uh, I yes, know. I do. I do arrangements of uh, of uh, pieces that I love, for example, Handel and Mozart and uh, Beethoven. I do arrangements like a piano songbook and I also mm -hmm. compose uh, pieces uh, uh, that come uh, to my mind. Uh, and I try to write a kind of music that goes back to simplicity in a, in a way yeah? that it's not so complicated. Not, uh, it's maybe not... Uh, uh, can, can be complex either, but it should be also an invitation for everybody. Yeah? Right. And uh, this is the goal I, I, I want to have with that uh, kind of music. And uh, uh, I made a, a recording that will be edited in February with uh, like a piano songbook. Yeah? And this is, mm. was great uh, joy, of course, to, to do this. Yeah? So there's always something to do for us. We are, we are musicians. And, um, right. But uh, on the other hand, of course, it's difficult for all of us uh, lack of concerts yeah and uh, now in germany concerts uh, slowly start again uh, i must say like uh, we play twice then uh, for for a limited audience uh, but still something is going on and that's of course a good luck but i guess in in, in the us uh, you're still quite far away from an, a, a normal uh, start with with concerts yeah. i guess mm. well. This is very pity, pitiful situation, yeah. Yeah, well, it will definitely be a very historical uh, moment for arts and for music. So I'm very glad that um, I will get to see your concert on Dream Stage. So I look forward to hearing you play Bach. I mean, after hearing your personal relationship with it, I think um, it will be even more interesting for me to hear your Thank performance. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I enjoyed very much our, <laughs> our talk and oh, <laughs> to see you and, and, and talk to you. It was really nice. Felt, felt very well for me. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, thank you so much for your time. I don't want to take too much of yours. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, uh, was a privilege, Tiffany. Oh, thank no. you. <laughs> privilege is mine, really, to talk to you. But thank you. Uh, have a good night. Um, Good enough. Be well. All best to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you learned something from our conversation. I know I definitely did. A huge thank you to DreamStage for collaborating with Together with Classical so that we can offer more opportunities for people to experience classical music. And yes, there's our concert ticket giveaway, but please be kind and considerate. If you're able to buy tickets, please just buy them in the link and support these wonderful artists. If you're really not able to, which is also totally understandable, and that's why I'm doing this collaboration with DreamStage on Together With Classical, you can enter the concert ticket giveaway. Hope you win. I founded Together With Classical not only as a place where everyone can unite and share their love for classical music, but also so that as a charity, we can fund opportunities for people to experience classical music. So very happy about this partnership. I hope you are too. Please subscribe for more episodes of Classical Chats. Yes, I'm telling you to subscribe because this is a very new channel and I'm very excited about this project and this opportunity to talk to so many different artists. The more people we have subscribed here in this channel, the more people would be interested in coming on and having conversations and sharing their experiences with all of us. So, see you next time.